Chris, also tonight, a Las Vegas space entrepreneur will see the future of his company soar or fizzle this week, depending on the outcome of a NASA-controlled launch in Florida. Now, if all goes well, an experimental spacecraft built in North Las Vegas will be lifted into the sky this Friday and then will be attached to the International Space Station. It's a risky proposition, but uh, could be a key to future commercial development of space. The I-Team's George Knapp is here with the story of a pivotal moment for Bigelow Aerospace. It's uh, the equivalent of a $300 million roll of the dice uh, for Las Vegas businessman Bob Bigelow, who started his own space program in 1999 and already has two of his craft orbiting the Earth. But the Friday launch is the Big Enchilada, a true test of whether his inflatable module will be suitable for more exotic missions, including bases on the moon and beyond. You would assemble bases on the lunar surface out of various modules and uh, somehow you would connect these together on maybe an irregular surface and uh, eventually you would have your base. No one will and accuse Bob Bigelow of thinking machine. small, the model of a privately owned human outpost on the surface of the moon or even Mars reveals his intentions ever since he founded Bigelow Aerospace in 1999. He spent just under $300 million of his own money to create from scratch a sprawling aerospace plant in North Las Vegas, a factory for building various incarnations of inflatable spacecraft modules that could serve as standalone space stations or larger configurations leased to corporations or governments or as the building blocks for permanent settlements on other worlds. You know, you look at this thing and you realize you're serious. I mean, you, this, this could actually happen. It happened in our lifetime. Well, we've already had clients that, would, that said, well, we have an interest in having a lunar activity. If we're with you in low Earth orbit and, and we're doing various things in that area, um, experimental-wise and, and, and uh, you know, laboratories and so forth. If you had a facility, we would, we would be interested in talking to you about that. This week could decide just how realistic such plans might be. This is BEAM, Bigelow Expandable Activity Module. It's been in this compressed, strapped-down status for more than a year. Two, one. On Friday in Florida, the BEAM will be blasted into the sky atop a SpaceX Dragon rocket. Hours later, it will rendezvous with the International Space Station, where a robotic arm will attach it to the ISS. Then, over a period of months, it will be inflated to its full size for two years of testing to see how well it holds up. If all goes well, Bigelow says he plans to build two much larger spacecraft, BA-330s, and have them ready to launch by 2020, the world's first private space stations. Two earlier Bigelow spacecraft, Genesis 1 and 2, were launched from Russia in 06 and 07 and performed exactly as planned. But BEAM is the first ever expandable craft designed for human occupancy. So the Friday launch represents a huge roll of the dice for the company and for NASA, which signed a nearly $18 million contract to build BEAM. Space Station is truly our stepping stone to the rest of the solar system. When NASA honchos visited the plant in 2013 and again last year to lay the groundwork for the upcoming mission, they acknowledged the government will likely never return to the moon, but will partner with private companies to get there, including the local company that's now at the center of all commercial activity in space. I've always been a dreamer, and I've been blessed to be married to someone who puts up with that. I spoke to Bob Bigelow last night before he left for Florida. He's excited and more than a bit anxious because there are so many unknowns at work. How well the SpaceX rocket will perform, uh, whether the beam will deploy as planned after a year in storage, how it will hold up to the dangers and stresses of space. The company has expanded and contracted a couple of times in the last five years, but if all goes well, it could be looking at a major expansion again. And we're told the NASA channel will carry the launch Friday afternoon live. Uh, more information about the mission is on our website. Oh, wish him the best of yeah. luck. Yeah, it's it's big stuff. Big it is. Yeah, yeah, thanks, George.